This is John Pluta in Millersville, Georgia, georgiabees.com. This is September. I'm here to take a swarm of bees out of a small little storage building. I normally don't do this, but the property is being sold. It's only a mile from my from my bee yards. It's probably my bees anyway. What I'm going to do is just show everybody asking me all the time how to do this. I don't do it anymore, hardly at all. So I'm going to do just a quick little video to show people so I can just have them watch the video. I've already removed the ceiling from this little storage shed. When I first looked with the flashlight, I saw the comb on both sides. I thought it was a huge nest. It's still a good sized nest, but there are some empty combs. So the bees are short on uh, honey this time of year. What I liked about this little job here was the, the combs are nice and straight. So some of these will be re reusable. Now, in the past, what I've done is I normally tell people that I don't do this anymore. But I encourage all beekeepers to do this once or twice so that next time somebody asks them and saying instead of saying no, you can say hell no. But as I back up on my thinking anymore, what I have started doing is charging people now. A lot of people think that we are going to get a barrel of honey out of these little jobs in a, in a thousand dollar beehive, which just does not work. To discourage people from asking me to do this anymore, I basically say it starts off at $100 just for me to think about it. $200 if it involves a ladder, which 99% of times it does. And another $100 if it, if it involves any kind of travel and return trips. Basically what I'm going to do is cut these combs out, put them in one box, Leave the box here overnight or in the morning. What I've done, what each job is a little different. It all depends where you're at. The only reason I'm, I'm liking this job is it, it's basically head high in this little six foot building. And the only, only ladder I'm using, going to be using is this little step ladder right here. First off, real quick, you always need to have a checklist of when you go out. What I sometimes do is is just in case I'm going to have a veil or a jacket in case the bees get a little testy. Then you want you, you want to have a, a, a going smoker load up with fuel. I always have one deep high body box and a backup to catch your excess comb. Another thing you absolutely have to have is a, a bucket of water ready. It's going to be a sticky mess. What these are are little blocks of wood. These are going to separate the combs when I put them inside to keep the bees from being smashed. I normally also bring along a couple frames just in case uh, I can also use them. For, I can use them for spacers and or to cut out one of the frames and just kind of wedge it in here in the center. Another thing, uh, I really prefer to have a pair of uh, the new uh, plastic rubber gloves in case things do get sticky again you need a knife a hive tool a bee brush a crowbar just in case i also always have a uh, queen box with me either either i prefer the plastic or have a wood one just in case you run across the queen you can cage her real quick and that way you know where she's at sometimes you get her sometimes you don't i'm going to leave that right up here and then what I've already seen in, in this hive, of, if, if you're in the southeast United States, as soon as we're done, we're going we're gonna to use some of the, uh, the new beetle traps that I sell um, and, and, and bait them. And uh, we're going to put those in the bottom of the hive because once all these combs get set, set inside your box, there's, there's going to be a kind of a disaster as far as uh, places for the hive beetles to hide. I'm going to give it a little smoke. 
YouTube have a YouTube have YouTube has a 10 minute time limit on their videos. I'm gonna try to get most of this done. In fact, right when I smoked, there's a little small hob uh, a hob beetle just fell into my water, f fell off the comb. Very interesting. That's basically the, the, the what happens when you have oil traps underneath your 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 hives. Hob beetles can't swim too good. In water, they will try, but this will oil, they'll get all over themselves and, and drown very rapidly. I'm going to try to do this in a 10 minute limit, or if, if the video happens to end all of a sudden, just watch for part two. I'm just going to set my little digital camera to the side and hope we can catch this here. My first job is to get rid of the excess comb that the bees aren't on. There is, a, there, is there was a little honey in, in, in these here. Now, I, right here, the first comb, we have little small hive beetles running for the hills. So even your wild hives, that's where a lot of your hive beetles might come from. When we when they're not treated, that was just the first comb, and there's already 10 or 15 small hive beetles. That was a frame of honey it just fell all over me. I didn't realize there was that much honey on the inside of that frame. This is definitely going to be one sticky mess. I can also see my time limit. I haven't even gotten to the uh, bees yet. What I'm trying to do is save some of these combs keep them out in, in semi uh, correct spacings these combs right here are rather heavy with honey I'll be attempting to, to reestablish the hive just the way it is. We have honey dripping on top of me. You don't want the bees to run too much, so just occasional light smoke. Number one, the last time I did one over my head like this, these combs here are rather old. This, this hive has been here for a while. This is about another 10, 10 pound frame of honey. <laughs> 